bitterness, maybe I'm a failure, I'm going to disappoint the people around me or disappoint their families, and really try to step back from that a little bit and say, you know, these are all the great things I'm doing and I'm going to do as well as I can and it's going to be okay. Um, and to try to kind of set those realistic expectations for themselves. I also think self-care becomes very important during this time. Um, we know studies show that not sleeping, not eating, not exercising and drinking actually affect our retention and our ability to, to do work. So I think especially moving into this period, you know, if people can keep a regular sleep schedule, keep going to the gym, keep eating, they're actually going to do better than if sometimes it's easy to sweep all those things aside and say, I don't have time. Um, and you actually end up, you know, working less effectively, retaining information less well. So really kind of to f keeping focus on the self-care aspects that an hour at the gym probably is more important than, than an hour studying. Okay. Um, so kind of switching gears, um, last year there was the concern with H1N1 mm -hmm. and I know that UHS worked um, for a preparedness and response mm -hmm. program for that and H1N1 seems like it wasn't kind of as serious or as widespread mm -hmm. as maybe we had expected. But I'm wondering um, what um, health issues or health emergencies are you thinking about now mm -hmm. and planning mm -hmm. for? Well, it was, it's interesting because on campus, actually, H1N1, H1N1 was, a, was a, actually quite a big deal. Okay. Um, we were fortunate in that we had no students, you know, we had no deaths, we had no hospitalizations, but at some points during the fall, UHS was completely overwhelmed with students ill with flu symptoms. And um, so in terms of the demand for healthcare services, um, it was very dramatic for us here. And we worked very closely with our campus partners, our public health partners, the medical centers, you know, for example, UW Hospital. And um, many of those hospitals actually reached, came close to the point where they were about to kind of be over capacity. So okay. I think actually the community did a great job managing it, um, but it was actually probably a bigger deal than was maybe, reported. yeah, or maybe it turned into be. And, and okay. so I think it's a success story. Um, but we were, but a lot of places were actually nearing surge capacity in terms of management of it. Communicable, right now we have no communicable disease outbreak we're, we're monitoring, which is a good thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but one of our roles is as a public health agency, which means that if there is any kind of communicable disease on campus, we're sort of responsible for that. And we deal with them pretty regularly, actually. So, um, you know, norovirus is, with gastroenteritis outbreaks is a pretty common thing. We've had several sort of outbreaks on the campus. Can you explain that a little bit for people who aren't familiar yeah, with so that? So norovirus is, is, one of, is the virus that causes acute vomiting and diarrhea. Um, it is really common. Um, you may have been seen in the news there was actually an outbreak in daycare centers in Madison okay. um, just a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we were monitoring that closely. Um, but it's a viral illness and it causes a very short 24 hours to 36 hours um, but, um, illness, but it's a pretty severe illness with lots and lots of vomiting, lots and lots of diarrhea. People can get very sick from it quickly being dehydrated and particularly for people who are younger or who have other medical conditions, they can get very ill from it very quickly. The challenge with norovirus is it's extremely contagious and it's also really difficult to remove from environmental surfaces. So it's associated with um, outbreaks in places like cruise ships where you've got a whole bunch of people together and it can just spread very quickly. Um, it can also happen in daycare centers, that's another reason it just spreads really quickly, schools. And certainly residence halls are another place where we can see it spread very quickly or sorority houses or even places where you've got 10 or 11 people living together. So it's a really common thing um, and we, we, you know, whenever we ha see a few cases, we quickly work to, um, we've got protocols developed, for example, with housing staff about um, cleaning recommendations, really getting in very quickly, trying to stop the spread before it becomes more widespread. But other common things we've had, um, we continue to work on flu preparedness. Um, there's been mumps outbreaks on college campuses. Um, you know, certainly cases of meningococcal meningitis are always a concern. So it's a pretty regular part of um, managing the health of a population that lives in a relatively closed environment. Okay. 
Um, let's see. I'm wondering what healthcare services are most used by students um, at UHS, and what services does UHS offer that are maybe underutilized by students? So the most common services we provide are the primary care services, which are just sort of, and primary care can range from, um, you know, being someone who's sick or someone who just needs a general physical. So it's illnesses, colds, flus, monos, brain strains, those sorts of things. Um, very common students need services for those things. Um, the other really more popular ones include flu shots. Um, we do about, I think this year we did about 9,500 flu shots, so really trying to promote that. And then also women's health services. So for you know birth control prescriptions, um, STI testing, um, just other sexual health questions, those are very commonly used. Mm -hmm. um, the, and then, our, of course, our mental health services, counseling and crisis are also used. We, have a, we serve about right around 3,500 students a year in, in those mental health services, and then about 25, 26,000 a year in our medical services. Okay. Um, less utilized services include, um, some things I might promote to people include our wellness services. So students can come in and have an individual wellness consultation to kind of review their nutrition, physical activity, um, try to, to kind of just want to promote their wellness. Um, so that's a service I might mention that students should consider doing. Sounds interesting. Um, UHS is celebrating its 100th birthday mm -hmm. or anniversary mm -hmm. soon, and so I'm wondering um, if there are any plans to celebrate that milestone and what UHS is doing for that. We are actually, and we'll probably um, look for the, probably at the beginning of spring semester, there'll be a lot more coming out about it. Um, we are celebrating it for a couple of reasons. One is um, we think it's important for our staff and our and the people we've served to celebrate it because it's you know it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, two is we're, we really use it as an opportunity to promote what we do, um, and we're going to be using a lot of wellness themes as part of the UL initiative in our centennial celebration. So to use it really as an opportunity to get messages out on campus about wellness. Um, What's interesting, I think, about the centennial is there's some really interesting, a really interesting book that was recently written about the, the history of college health services and, and why they started and, and their origins. Um, and most of them, their origins were around the turn of the century um, because of outbreaks of illness, uh, both typhoid, um, and that was the origin on this campus, as well as um, the 8, 1918 influenza outbreak. Um, so most college health services actually have their origins in, um, in, in either pandemic or in other sort of communicable diseases. So I think what's fascinating is we really haven't changed that much about what we do. Um, um, it's really, it's about public health role. Um, how do you keep a population of people healthy who are all sort of living together? Um, so we're, we're excited to kind of pull some of that history out and uh, it's interesting, like I said, that we just went through H1N1 and um, it, it, nothing, things don't change that much, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so. Um, so you've only been the, the mm -hmm. director for a couple of years, but I'm wondering um, what you feel like your biggest, biggest accomplishment has mm -hmm. been and then where you see, um, you know, what your goals are for UHS moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, we certainly have done a lot of things. Um, we have, um, you know, I think I think I, I our staff has done an amazing job in, um, you know, I think our organization transformed a bit with the move from our old facility. Um, at the same time that we moved, not only did we move physically, um, but we also took undertook some efforts to. Um, promote our image and also to really um, be more explicit about what we offered to campus. So we've internally implemented, um, we went from paper-based records to electronic records um, and with that we have a lot better data about what we do, how well we do it, um, really taking an aggressive stand of reporting out to campus. This is what we provide, this is the quality of the services that we provide. So I'm really proud of how our staff have adopted those new technologies, been able to transform